Keep talking. There we go. You can be seated. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Hey, I want to thank you guys for coming. Uh, Eston College has been kind to me and has let me speak on their stage. And when we were able to offer our stage, uh, we were delighted to do so. I am jealous on a few different fronts. I wish I could play guitar. I wish I could sing. I wish I could play drums. I wish I could play piano. I wish I could play piano and sing. But aside from that, I can do what you did. sounded great. Thank you for leading us in worship. I invite you to bow your heads with me. Let's uh, continue this worship service with prayer. Lord God, we are richly blessed. Uh, boy, we are uh, we're richly blessed. We're thankful to you for the freedom that uh, we have to do this sort of thing. We're thankful to you for the freedom that we can turn the speakers on loud and the lights on bright and we can praise your name and we can open the doors and let the sound leak out and that people are drawn to you. We thank you for that, Lord God. We thank you for uh, this Eston crew that has come. We thank you for the people in this congregation. We thank you for those watching at home uh, or wherever they are. Lord God, we thank you for these things. We offer this up as worship to you. Lord, we pray that this whole service, start to finish, is a sweet smell, something that you like. And that you are well pleased, Lord God. Who asks this of you? In your name I pray. Amen. Well, welcome here, and uh, it's, I'm glad to see a bunch of faces here. This is really good. Uh, I know that we have got some uh, visitors here. You're very welcome. Uh, I'm glad that you're here. Man, did you land at a good church this, this morning. I'm just telling you, you just wait to see what's coming. This is going to be so good. I'm just excited to have you here. I've got a quick story to tell and then one announcement. Uh, many times on the stage I have talked to you about how people from Norfolk Seniors Home, which is in Norfolk County, Ontario, somewhere near Hamilton, uh, watch the YouTube videos later on in the week. They put us all up on the screen nice and big, and they worship with us. Well, I was in Ontario this past week. I actually just got in very early this morning, and uh, I drove by the Norfolk Seniors Home, and I thought, I'm going in, and I'm going to say hi. And I made it to the front door where I met a lady who would not let me come in. Now, she was little, and she looked like she wasn't in charge. I found out I was wrong. She was huge, and she was very much in charge. And uh, she said, can I see your vaccination? And I showed her, and she said, that's not from Ontario. And I said, I'm not from Ontario. And that's sort of where the conversation ended. So I can tell you they have a beautiful front lobby. Really nice. You should go see it. But I didn't get in. So I sent a, a, a note through uh, some people who live there um, that uh, we love them and that we are praying for them. So for the when you're watching later on this week, we're praying for you. We love you. Thanks for uh, joining with us. I have one more announcement, and then I'm going to introduce someone who's going to come speak to us. Um, oh, here's the last announcement. The church is usually open on Mondays, and you uh, can come in, and Carmen is here. Carmen is going to be working at home uh, on Mondays. You understand she's got a long drive, and uh, this is a way that we can certainly uh, save uh, quite a bit on fuel. And so she's going to be working at home. That tends to be when the video is all edited and posted. And it's funny to me that uh, the internet at a farm in a field is a little bit better than the internet here. And uh, so we're able to do that. You're still able to call, uh, and, and uh, she is, she's working. But uh, if you're coming to the church on Monday, there won't be anyone here. Tuesday, well, for the rest of the week, there is someone here, and so you're free to stop in. Okay, I would like to introduce my friend Brooklyn. Uh, I like it when people have cool names, and Brooklyn is a really neat name. How long have you had that one? Oh, for my whole life. Yeah, let me, let me guide you over here to a microphone. It's going to work better. This is Brooklyn. Brooklyn, uh, what, how long have you been at Eston College? This is my first year. Yeah? Almost eight months. Uh, where's home? Sherwood Park, Alberta. I have heard of this place. Yeah. Well, we want to welcome you here, and we want to thank you for being willing to, to uh, come and share with us today, and I'll leave you to it here. Uh, before I do, let me pray for you, and then, 
And then I'll walk off stage. Lord God, we want to thank you for Brooklyn. We want to thank you for young women who decide to come and be trained, come and dive deeper into your word, listen to wise people, research wise people, think broad thoughts. Lord God, we're grateful for this. Pray that you fill Brooklyn with the Holy Spirit. Lord God, let her words be your words and let our ears be your ears and let us hear what you have to say. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In your name I pray, amen. Okay, so hello, everybody. Um, Just a heads up, I actually didn't know I would be speaking at all until like this morning. (laughs) So um, yeah, Holy Spirit just guide me in what I'm about to say. But I'm actually... I still can't believe fully that I've been at Eston College as long as I have. To me, it feels like a bit of a dream actually getting here. I was not planning on coming to Eston um, really at all before this fall. And then this summer I was at camp. It's called Veteran Full Gospel Camp, if you've ever heard of it. And I was talking to some people who have come to Eston before and people who were coming back this year. And I it c- the idea came up that maybe I should go and I kind of brushed that idea off and I was like oh that's silly why uh, I've never thought of it before and then God kept kind of prying at my heart and being like no you need to go and so I had this kind of internal debate with God over like a few months and then three days basically before people started moving into the dorms I actually applied and then I ended up coming and packing and here I am so actually getting here is like wow I I don't know how I'm here it feels like I look back and I'm like whoa where did time go Um, but I think the biggest thing that I've learned since coming to Eston is just how present God is in my life and coming to Eston beforehand I really struggled with hearing God's voice. I really struggled with knowing that he was actually there and that he actually had things to tell me that I could understand. I always felt like there were just so many thoughts inside of my head and how did I know if it was my voice or if it was God's voice? And so I struggled a lot with that. And then coming to Estin, I had conversation upon conversation about hearing God's voice and I was just growing and learning, okay, I really, I still want to hear your voice, God. And some of the advice that I was given was that sometimes we think it's our own voice, but it's actually God's voice, and that he uses our thoughts to speak to us. And so when that kind of actually hit me, then I started to actually hear what God was saying. And so as I, as I was growing in that, I started journaling. I started writing down just what was in my mind. I'd ask God a question like, okay, God, what are you saying to me right now? Where are you right now? What do you have to say about this? And then I'd start writing, and then as I was writing, I would just realize like, oh, wow, yeah, this is God talking to me, and he would actually start confirming things. And so my journey over coming in the fall until now, I've seen this incredible growth that in the moment, if you ask me if I've grown in that, I would have been like, no, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't feel like anything's changed. But looking back, it's just incredible to me the way that he has spoken to me and he has revealed more and more of himself, whether it be through other people giving me prophetic words or would it be through journaling, whatever it is. I actually had this point um, earlier in the semester around like February when we went on a prayer walk and I was out just kind of listening, okay, Jesus, what do you have to say to me? Where do you want me to go? And basically at the end of it, he had me sprint after a woman down the street to go tell her about him and to pray for her. And it was that moment that I think was the kind of pivotal turning point where I was like, wow, I hear Jesus. Guys, I hear Jesus. He talks to me. Because I would never have like sprinted after this woman down the street if it was just my own heart. I would have been way too nervous to go do that. But as I'm walking, he was just lining thing up upon thing. And then he was like, that lady right there, go talk to her. And so I just went and Holy Spirit took over. So I'm just so thankful for the way God has taught me and grown me and the way he is still speaking and the way that I'm just learning more and more of who he is. I feel just beyond blessed to be at Eston College and be growing in that way. So, yeah. Uh, I just really want to quickly say a prayer over all of you, if that's okay. Um, Yeah, Jesus, I just thank you for the way that you have spoken to me and the way that you have taught me who you are and the way that you speak to me this year coming to Eston. 
And I just pray right now for anybody here who feels like they struggle hearing your voice or they feel like maybe they just have a disconnect right now. I just ask that you would break through that, that they would be able to hear you clearly, that they would be able to discern whether it's you or not, Jesus, and that you would just bring people alongside them that would encourage them and just, yeah, reveal to each of us more of who you are, Jesus. We just love you so much. Amen. Thank you. Brooklyn, I want to tell you a secret, if I may. The most common conversation I have with people, a private conversation, they come, they make sure no one else is listening, and they tell me, I have never heard God's voice. And they all think that everyone else hears God's voice all the time, but just them, they never have. And so it is uh, permission giving for someone to say, listen, I didn't hear God's voice, and then when I learned how, like any muscle, it gets stronger. And when I respond, boy, it gets, uh, gets clearer, doesn't it? Thank you for that. That's, uh, th- that was uplifting. Appreciate that. We're going to enter into the part of the service today where we offer our tithes and our offerings. And this is a place where uh, we give a tenth of what God has given us financially. And this money goes towards uh, the upkeep of the church, the, the uh, paying everything that the church has to pay, goes to outreach, goes to ministry, goes outside of our borders to other countries. Um, this is how we use what God has given us. And he has invited us to participate in this. For those of you who have never heard God's voice, can I suggest that uh, one of the things God's voice says is participate. And this is a great, way to pl- a great place to start. And so I would give you that challenge and that invitation. Participate. We, I'll get the uh, ushers to come to the front here, and I will pray for the, the offering. I invite you to bow your heads with me. Lord God. Again, you have given us so much, and uh, we think of the people who have so much less than we do as we sit in our uh, heated and air-conditioned building with uh, each of us having refrigerators with food in them. Lord God, uh, we are just richly blessed. Lord, we ask that this part of worship is also pleasing to you. Lord, uh, let the church use this money wisely. Lord, make us accurate and make us effective. Make every dollar stretch to two. Draw people close to you. And Lord, let us be able to participate that, participate with that through tithes and offerings, Lord God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In your name I pray. Amen. Now, somewhere sitting out here is someone named Cameron, but I've lost him. There he is. Come on up, Cameron. Robin, I'm stealing this microphone right here. Um, Cameron is coming to preach for us today, and I've spoken with Cameron a few times, and we've been able to uh, uh, do it uh, face-to-face, sort of, over the Internet, and, and talking to you about what you have prepared today, what you have heard God say and uh, one, of the, one of the things that I'm really excited about is that uh, you are a family name here. And so we did something behind your back and didn't tell you about it. And I'm sorry. And I'm going to tell you about it now. Your grandma and grandpa are here. Now I need to tell you, these two are prayers. Many times I will call them and say, there's something happening, I need you to pray. I'm not telling you anything, I just need you to pray. And uh, I know they are praying for me. 
I will oftentimes get a phone call from them later saying, hey, what was going on at 2.30? There was, at 2.30, our minds were just brought to what was going on, and we were praying for the specific thing. And I'm telling you, Cam, more often than not, uh, what they're talking about is actually what was happening in that moment. God speaks to them very clearly. And so I've asked them if they would come and they would pray for you. And so if, you, if uh, you're willing to come up here, you know, uh, I haven't asked them this, but I am certain they've been praying for you already. Does that sound like something that's already happened? Yeah, exactly, I think so yeah. too. Yeah. And so I'm going to step back here and uh, just know that uh, you are loved already and you are prayed for already. And uh, we're thankful to you for this. Cam's probably thinking it's not a good idea to give Grandma a mic because she knows all kinds of cute and embarrassing stories she can share. <laughs> we won't do that to you this morning, Cam. I just want to say that probably the, the, one of the greatest blessings we experienced as parents was to see our children come to know Jesus and to follow him. And now we are doubly blessed when the second generation is doing likewise. So Cam, I just pray for you this morning. I thank you, God, for what you're doing in Cam's life. I thank you for the giftings that you've given him, and I thank you, Cam, for stepping out and using the gifts and calling that God has placed within you to minister to others. And this morning, I pray, Lord, that you will fill his heart with joy and peace as he brings forth the message that you have given him to share with us this morning. And I ask it in Jesus' name. I just found a, a scripture this morning that I thought would really fit what Elaine had said here. It says, but the Lord's love never failed those who fear him. His righteousness never fails their sons and their grandsons. Again, we just thank you, Lord, for, for Cam, for the blessing that he's been to our family. And we do look to you that, Lord God, just as you've drawn him to yourself, you now live within him by your spirit, that uh, you would just enable him to bring forth the, the message that you've laid on his heart. Amen. I was definitely not expecting that. <laughs> A good surprise, though. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, <laughs> lively over there. Um, <laughs> well, sorry, I need to get into my right set of mind for this. Um, <laughs> my name is Cameron, as you already know, and I grew up in a very small community called Veteran Alberta and way smaller than Kindersley. And I grew up with a family who really showed me how to love others and to love Christ. And with that, I learned a lot on for how to be on stage, for doing worship, how to be on stage for even speaking. Like this is my probably my fifth time ever speaking in front of a group of people of this size. <laughs> and so, yeah, I just wanted to explain a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm 19 years old. This is my second year at Eston. Uh, currently enrolled in the worship track. And yeah, that's probably enough about me because I have stuff that God wants to talk about. I know you better than you know yourself. Think about that. <coughs> I know you better than you know yourself. I don't know about you, but I feel like I know myself better than anyone else. <laughs> I'm even saying that with my family here and my friends sitting on over here. And there are many things that many people don't know about me that I know about myself but there are also things that they know about me that I don't know about myself. But still, I think I know myself pretty, pretty
pretty well and more than anyone else here. But when I hear the words, I know you better than yourself, my immediate thought is to deny any possibility that someone could know me that well. But when you start to think about it, maybe there is someone that might know me better than I know myself. If you go to the next slide, please. <laughs> so when I was really young, or when we were really young, we don't really understand a whole lot about ourselves. Like, I didn't know that I even had feet at this point. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was still discovering a lot of new things. <laughs> and we relied on our parents and the people around us to reveal parts of us from their perspective. I couldn't make my own decisions on what I wanted for lunch or what clothes to wear to look the cutest for picture opportunities like that one. That we needed to rely on the people around us. If you want to go to the next slide again. My sister would definitely not like to know that I used this picture. <laughs> but as we get older, we begin to learn more about ourselves. I know that I don't like seafood or mushrooms, but I love spinach and pineapple. Not together, I'm just saying. Uh, I learned that I liked animals and the color blue. And I also learned that I had a great family around me who led me to being, or who led me by being role models. And my family showed me that a relationship with God was extremely important, even if I didn't completely understand what that meant. My, my family was heavily involved in church ministry as I grew up. So my parents were youth leaders. And as, as I grew up, of course, being a little, guy, little kid, got dragged along to a few different events, got to experience some of that. And my, my parents loved to volunteer in the community. And so a lot of the time I would be dragged to different things and just be able to experience something new that God had. Even if I didn't really care for the volunteering by picking garbage out of ditches or things like that, it was still something that made me who I am. Um, if you want to go one more slide ahead. <laughs> this picture was only taken a couple years ago, and it's me in front of my 2006 Hyundai Sonata. I know, best car in the world. <laughs> Great. You may be laughing, but there is actually some truth behind that. In, in the hunt for my first car, I came up empty-handed, but then again, I didn't try super hard because I was procrastinating. But one day, I was preheating the, the oven for supper, and all of a sudden, I just hear this manly honk coming from outside. As you can tell, like one of those very manly honks. <laughs> it's great. And as, as you can imagine, I was like, yes, something like a big truck is outside. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for this. And as soon as I stepped outside, I was surprised that my parents had found this car. At first, I was very skeptical because I was wanting something a little bit flashy, something with a loud motor, something to show off a little bit. But they also knew that I would like this car, that I would grow to love it. This car was something that I realized was exactly what I wanted and needed. Because, to be honest, you don't need to be out flashy and out loud and out doing all these crazy things because sometimes just having space for friends to take to different activities is a lot more important. <laughs> yeah, excuse me. <laughs> a little bit off topic, but a fun fact. In a few... In a few Hyundai representative interviews in 2008, the, the press asked what was the least trustworthy car of the Hyundai family, and sure enough, it was a 2006 Hi Sonata model. And yet I have never had a single issue with this car other than a hole in the rear bumper and a check engine light that sometimes goes off, sometimes goes on. I should really get that checked. Um, <laughs> I actually drove it here this morning, so it's still working great. <laughs> um, if you want to go to the next slide. 
John 10, 27 reads, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I'm going to be honest with you. For quite a large portion of my life, instead of listening to what God had planned for me, I was doing the things that the way that I wanted to. Sure, I want, sure I grew up in a, in a Christian home, accepted Christ when I was four, rededicated my, my relationship with Christ when I was 12. But yet, I still wasn't necessarily listening to what God was calling me to. I was just doing things the way I wanted to. Like, I would rather spend time with friends or play games on my computer rather than sit down and read my Bible or do devotions or practice guitar. <laughs> but when I grew up, I was shy, very introverted, and spent most of my time playing with a very small group of friends or family or just playing games by myself. And the only times I really spent time with larger groups of people were at VBS or at a summer camp. Little did I know that this camp would have a pivotal moment in my life over time. But this camp, specifically, as Brooklyn had mentioned, was Veteran for Gospel Camp. And it runs for one week every single year, or tries to, other than two years where there was one flood and, of course, COVID. But other than that, I've attended at all of the camps that have run since I've been alive. So 17 camps, which is quite, quite cool actually. But each year I learned a little bit more about who God was and, how, and what he was wanting to do in my life. So it, this camp really has, is a, is a full family camp. So it has like the little kids, it has the like, I guess toddlers and then kids camp and then teen camp and then there's stuff for the adults and so there's something for everyone for this entire week and it was completely free so it was great and there was f there was ice cream yeah. so why not you know <laughs> and sure when I was in the toddler preschool area I didn't learn very much about who God was because I was more interested in the Lego off to the side or something like that but when I got to the kids' camp, I started paying a little bit more attention to what was being said. I started, saying, I started knowing and realizing what I was singing in the worship. Romans 16, 19 says, that's a great one. I'm not going to sing it, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but as I got older, I built a stronger faith. And I also realized that I didn't really care for large group games because of my introverted self. I didn't really care for sitting with a large group of people that I didn't know because I just wanted to be either with the people that I didn't know or just by myself. So then I wasn't just like <laughs> overwhelmed by anything. And yet I still wanted to go to camp every year. And so since I was introverted and shy, there were a few people that I was really excited to see, but that wasn't the full reason why I wanted to go every year. Was it the amazing food? Partially, but that wasn't enough to make me want to go each year. But what was it? Why did I want to go every year if there was no, if there was nothing that was really pulling me there? If you want to go to the next slide again. <laughs> Matthew 7, verse 8 reads, For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks the door will be opened. I realized I kept wanting to go back to this camp because God was wanting to tell me something about myself that I was refusing to accept because I thought I knew myself better than he did. I was refusing to listen because I thought my plans were better. Sure I, sure, I still listened in going to the camp, but nothing more than that. I wasn't paying attention to any of the services. I was visiting with friends in the back or journaling something down or drawing a picture, and I'm not great at drawing pictures, so that was quite a, quite a bit interesting in that. <laughs> 
but over the last eight months of my life, I've really been challenged because I've been called a warrior, courageous, a leader, chosen, strong, and bold. Not words that you would commonly associate with an introvert. But yet, I'm standing right here in front of you. I think that's a testimony in itself. The shy introvert who never spoke up in class, who never spoke up about anything unless it really meant something important. And here I am. And sure, this is very important. God is very important. <laughs> but you may be wondering, is he lying about being an introvert? Where did we find this Alberta guy? Like, why is he here? I, 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 can't, I can't answer that. <laughs> but at veteran camp this last year, I had the task of running the projector for evening services, which I just want to pause for a moment and thank the tech, tech team at the back. You guys are very underappreciated, and I really want to thank you for everything that you do. You guys are amazing. I know because I've done it before. <laughs> yes. I actually love doing that kind of stuff, so I'm actually wanting to pursue that as a future career. So that's, that's really great. Um, anyways, <laughs> I was running the projector at the camp, and halfway through the week, the main worship leader for the week was already beginning to lose her voice, and the acoustic guitarist was leaving the next day, and I had a choice to make. I know how to play instruments. I could sing. The only thing I didn't have was the courage, or so I had initially thought. The worship leader came to the back to ask if I knew of anyone who could play guitar or sing, and my response was this. Yeah, I know a guy. He, he can play guitar and sing and play box drum, a little bit of piano on the side, you know, just basic stuff. And the next thing I knew, I was on stage. <laughs> Do you want to go to the next slide? I know you better than you know yourself. Around five months ago, I was put into a mini semester class, which for those of you who don't know what a mini, mini semester class is, it's basically a class that you take over the span of one week, and then you do homework for the next month or two just to uh, kind of fit in another course into the whole course load. But I was really procrastinating if I should do this class. There was a four-page assignment due on the first day of class, which was the very next day in my decision-making. I'm like, okay, I have, I have the ability to go to this class, or I can go learn how to cook food, which is great. Um, <laughs> but I was really torn because I felt like I should go to this one class. But I'm like, well, I just kind of want to relax a little bit. My course load has been a little bit heavy this last week. I should probably just kind of relax, take something a little bit easier, and do cook some food, have some snacks. But yet, I found myself the very next day in a class on how to be a leader. And let me just tell you, within a week, I went from barely stepping outside my room, unless there was food or class or service, to barely being able to stay in my room for two minutes because I wanted to be around people. I went from an introvert to an extrovert, just like that. Now, it's kind of hard to believe, but I'm currently living that, which is really hard to explain because when you hear something like that, you're like, oh, that's, that's possible but highly unlikely to happen and yet I'm standing in front of you and speaking. I, if you asked me to speak here last year, I would have been mortified and terrified. I would have been hiding in a corner. I would be finding every excuse not to be on this stage. But God gave me courage. If you want to go to the next slide again. One final story. <coughs> 
well, I guess maybe not one final story. Um, <laughs> when I was little, though I don't remember exactly any specific moment in time, but my parents played peekaboo with me. Even though they would hide their hands, or hide behind their hands, like this, peekaboo. Anyways, <laughs> I always knew that there was someone who loved me and cared about me behind those hands. Each time was a surprise to who it was behind the hands, but still, I knew that there was someone behind those hands, even if I could not see them. I had faith that there was someone there even when I could not see them. I had faith that my loving mother and father were there even if I did not see them. If you want to go to the last slide. God knows us better than we know ourselves. I don't know the number of hairs I have on my head or how many seconds I've been alive, but God knew us before we were even out of the womb. We need to remember that there is always someone that we can run to, even if his face is hidden from us. We know that he is there and that he knows us better than anyone else could, even ourselves, and that we can trust in him. That's something that I really did not expect to learn being 19 years old and second year at college. A lot of people don't realize exactly what the plans that God has for them until they're in their 30s or 40s. Like I've had conversations with those people and they look at me and just say, you are so special and so lucky. I wish I could have known what you knew at your age. But you don't have to be as young as me in order to have this revelation. God is always speaking to us. All we need to do is just look behind those hands and he is there. God's not trying to hide himself from us. He's always there and always willing all we need to do is just be able to look and find him. And he's not very hard to find. <laughs> All we need to do is just be willing to listen and be able and be willing to make a change in our lives. Something that I really wanted to work on while at college was growing in my, uh, what's the word? In, in giving to others. I, a lot of the time, I would be like, sure, spending a little bit of time with this person or this person, but not really spending time with that person, not getting to know that person, not willing to build a relationship or friendship with that person. And yet, now what I try to do is, when I meet someone new, I just try and ask them, hey, how are you, what, is, what are some of the things that you like doing, and just start like building a little bit of friendship with them, even in those small things. And if I looked at myself 10 years ago, or even, not even 10 years ago, if I looked at myself two years ago, or even last year, for who I am now, I would think that I would be an imposter, because who in their right why who in their <laughs> who in their right mind would think that a shy introvert kid who grew up in eight, 19 years of his life being really terrified of public speaking of being on a worship team of being out in public to be here doing those things it's not very often that you hear that god gave me courage when i didn't know that i needed it he knew me better than i knew myself he gave me the things and the tools and the people around me to realize that I was living a lie. I was not an introvert. I am literally so much more outgoing. And it's hard to tell right now because I'm tired, but <laughs> God gives us the tools and the people around us in the times that we need because he knows what we need. We may think that we need 
a lot of peace at a time. And sometimes that's true. But sometimes what we really need is love. Sometimes we're just really built up with anger inside and we do need peace. Sometimes we're annoyed and sometimes we're happy. But God is always putting the people there and putting and giving us the tools that we need in order to grow and to get through every part of life. I don't think that I really appreciated just how much the people in my life actually, like what they did until now. What I'm doing now is I'm literally going through my phone and going to old contacts and old messages and just thanking people and just asking, hey, is there anything I can pray for you for? And just like telling them a little bit about my new testimony and just being able to share like, hey, this is what God is doing in my life and I want to thank you for saying these things or being there for me in that time. And so I highly encourage you, don't forget the people that brought you to where you are now because God put them there in your life to, to help you become who you are. So I want to thank my parents and my grandparents because they were fantastic role models and made me into who I am today. They showed me how to love. They showed me how to care for others. They showed me so much. I want to thank my friends, my teachers. I don't, I wouldn't be able to be where I am now without having the conversations that I did with you guys, without building the relations that I had with you. I don't think that I would have been able to grow as much as I have if I was not able to accept that I don't know myself the best because sometimes you're just living the life that you want to see rather than the life that God has for you. And so I think that is all. I will invite Peter back up to do other things. Yeah. Thank you, brother. We are going to enter into uh, the part of the service where we are going to celebrate Holy Communion. This is a, uh, something that we do as a church and, and that uh, churches do where you will have uh, bread and you will have grape juice come by you. It will be served to you. This is something that uh, we do because Jesus did it and then he gave us instruction to do it and he also welcomed us to do it. There's been a funny thing that uh, has been happening uh, as the Eston crew has been talking about coming here. We've, beginning, uh, we've been hearing that uh, they're excited about trying the bread that Dwayne bakes. Uh, Dwayne is one of our elders here. And it's unleavened bread, and it's, uh, it's bread that's got no milk in it, and it's sort of as close to the recipe as, as we can get to, to what they would have eaten just as bread in biblical times. And it's very tasty. And so it's been fun to be able to say, yeah, we'll have it for you here, and this will be a good thing to, uh, for you to taste. But there's something bigger that goes on with that, and it is this. This is a celebration of uh, a Passover meal. Uh, you might have heard of it as the Last Supper. I want you to know it tastes good. I want you to know that this is something that you want. That this is something that is excellent. And it was uh, something that the Jewish people did, and they had done it. Uh, there's a big story behind it, and it was, uh, it was a rich and deep story. And then Jesus came, and he changed it. And he said, I want you to do this. I want you to do this uh, in remembrance of what I did for you. It's very fitting because if Jesus knows us better than we know ourselves, and I believe that he does, and he knows every little detail. He knew about the Hyundai before Cam knew about the Hyundai. He knew about the dog, about the ice cream, about the camp. He knew about the sister. He knew about that... Cam would be up here preaching. He knew all these things. He also knows every other bit more. And he said, I know you so well. 
and I'll die for you. Wow. That's next level knowing when you have all the information. And Jesus will die for us. I want to call the elders to come to the front. Traditionally, this is how we do it. We have the elders uh, serve. It's not, it doesn't have to be the elders by any stretch, but that traditionally is what we do at this church. Traditionally, I'll read the story of the Last Supper. It's found in the book of Matthew. There's other places in Scripture where it's also found, but this one serves us. And traditionally, traditionally we'll read through this, and first uh, will come the bread, and I'll pray for the bread. And then will come, the Bible will say wine, this is grape juice, and it will go by. And for those of you who believe that Jesus is Lord, for those of you that believe that Jesus actually does know you better than you know yourself, and that he is God, and that is the only way he could know you better than you know yourself, then I invite you to participate. If that's something that stretches you uh, to the uh, place where you're not willing to go, that is totally okay. I invite you just to let the elements pass you by. No problem. You're here safe with us. It's not going to be an issue. I do want to tell you, supper's good. I've tasted this one before. This is good. You want to seriously consider And I encourage you to seriously consider, is Jesus Lord? If you want to talk to somebody about that, you can talk to anyone we've got up here, but I would also encourage you to talk to the person beside you. And ask, what's your story? As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and he blessed it. It was actually really close to this kind of bread. Then he broke it into pieces and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this and eat it, for this is my body. Lord God, we, we are wowed, uh, we are awestruck, we are confused. Can't wrap our head around your, your body broken for us. I mean, I wasn't even alive when you were flesh and blood here on earth. Your body broken for us. Lord, we will eat this and we will think about that and we will remember that. And we want you to know that we thank you. Uh, our, our, our deepest, greatest thanks. Thank you. Thank you. You are God. You are good. We are humbled. Thank you. Amen. There is um, a gluten-free option in here. If you'd like, it's a cracker uh, in the paper cup. If you need that, feel free to partake with us. Let's eat this together in memory of what Jesus did. about um, Cameron's being willing to come up to play music at the camp. Someone coming to the back and saying, is there a volunteer? Ah, I'll volunteer, and up he comes. Except in this story, it isn't Cameron playing guitar. 
It's God saying, is there someone willing to be the ultimate sacrifice? Is there someone willing to endure the most savage pain we have ever figured out how to give and die so that no one else has to? Be the ultimate sacrifice. And Jesus literally standing there. His disciples around him. Not excited by the prospect at all, but knowing us better than we know ourselves and saying, I am willing. And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, Each of you drink from it, for this is my blood which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Again, God, uh, my imagination fails. There are just so many times where I am I am just so willing to say no. And you said yes for so much more than that. And your your blood poured out for us willingly. And I think about when Peter came to take on all of Rome, all the Roman soldiers. Don't worry, Peter has a knife. And you got in front of him and said no. And you didn't run. You went willingly. I find this deeply humbling. And again, we thank you. Bless this Lord God. Amen. We are just humbled. Bring this back to our minds again and again throughout this week, Lord God. Amen. Let's drink together. And then comes this part, and I can't tell you how many communion services I've gone through where they stop reading too quick. Listen to this part. You guys listening? This is Jesus speaking. Some of you will understand. This is red letters. Okay? Mark my words. I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. You want to hear about a potluck? That's the one to be at. I'm going to see you there. I'm going to see you guys there. We're going to do this again with Jesus. Why do they stop doing communion before they read that part? It's awesome. I want to invite you to stick around. Introduce yourselves to the Eston folk. Let them introduce themselves to you. I want to pray a blessing over top of you. This is the blessing I pray over my children every night before they go to sleep. 
May the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you all the days of your life. Oh, you got to come back next week. There's more supper. I promise it's going to be good. I promise. We'll see you next week.